सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड वी आर डूइंग द प्रैक्टिस सेशन एंड आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग एक्सरसाइज वन ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ वी मूव्ड ऑन टू और स्टार्टेड विद द बिगिनिंग पार्ट ऑफ एक्सरसाइज टू ऑब्जर्विंग नॉट ओनली द सेल्फ but while observing the self also observing the body and the interaction between the self and the body and we mentioned that this is one way there may be many ways of observing the self and the body this is one way we have chosen so we are discussing this so if we looked at this um, chart that we are very familiar with i think many workshops we have attended and we have seen this chart and discussed it at length basically from this chart we are trying to understand the two distinct realities one is the self which is a unit of consciousness and one is the body which is a material unit once we understand the self and the body the consciousness and the material then we can also understand other units in nature whether they be consciousness or the material so if you look at we said that three basic very major differences that we could see if we look at the needs if we look at the activities if we look at the response you will find that these are very different in the self and in the body and we must understand the two separately because when we mix them up then we are not clear about what it is that we need what is it that the body needs and how to go about fulfilling ourselves so the feelings are in the self it is the self that feels happy or unhappy body doesn't have feeling there are various sensations in the body but happiness or unhappiness is not something that the body has the capacity to experience so if you give instruction to the body to go jump off the sixth floor of a building the body will do it even though it harms the body there is no question of happiness or unhappiness it is just following the instructions that we are giving it so when we look at the needs of the self the self wants to be happy and wants to be happy in continuity you can ask yourself we had given this assignment yesterday you can ask yourself if there is any moment during the day that you want to be unhappy you may be unhappy at many moments but is it what you want at any moment do you want to be unhappy can you answer this in the chat what is the answer that you got no we don't want to be unhappy at any moment we may be unhappy at several moments during the day but if we look at our need what we want we don't want to be unhappy so this is a very basic need of the self 
that we want to be happy. We can observe this directly in ourselves. The other thing that we had mentioned was that this need of the self for happiness is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. And though we may not have the completeness of right understanding, so we may not be able to directly observe that within ourselves. But we have been directly observing the imagination. We have been directly observing the thoughts, the feelings. And in exercise one, we saw that when we have the right feeling, which is in line with our natural acceptance, then we feel calm, we feel comfortable, we feel happy. So this is direct observation that the need of the self for happiness has to do with feelings and it is fulfilled by the right feeling. Until we have completeness of right understanding, we can refer to our natural acceptance so that we know which is the right feeling, a feeling that is naturally acceptable to us. And whenever we have that feeling, we feel happy. So this fulfillment we can see directly. And since we are referring to the natural acceptance, we can see that ultimately when we have completeness of right understanding, this possibility is there that we can be happy in continuity all the time. And that is what we want. Because not at one moment during the day, we can find that we want to be unhappy. We want this happiness in continuity. So this is what it is saying. So everything that we saw in this chart, we are trying to see how we can directly observe it. In some of the later chapters, when we come to the lectures, we'll be discussing this again. But for now, we said that let us look at it. Then if we look at the activities of the self and the body, we saw that the activities in the self, the desire, the thought, the expectation of the imagination, that is going on continuously. At no time does it seem to stop. Of course, in, when I'm you know, observing, I may not have the competence. So many a time I may not be able to observe it. But it is there. As I become sharper at my observation, I will notice that even at times when I thought there is no imagination, there is actually an imagination going on. I just wasn't aware of it. So this also we will find that the self has continuous imagination going on. And if we look at the responses, in the case of the body, there is recognition and fulfillment. But in the say, case of the self, this recognition and fulfillment is colored by, is based on whatever we either we know about the reality or we assume about the reality, which may or may not be true. And based on that, we have some response, we recognize and fulfill. So we mentioned that if I assume that my relationship is only with my blood relatives, then I may recognize and fulfill that relationship in a certain way. But if I am with a person who is not a blood relative, and I am going with this assumption that this is not my relative, I am not related to this person, now my recognition and fulfillment may be very different. So my behavior, my response may be very different. And here it will be based on this assumption that I am related to 
such and such person, but I am not related to such and such person. So we have many such assumptions. But what is it that is real? What is it that is truly the case? That we can see only if we directly get to observing everything in this existence the way it is. That would be knowing. That is right understanding. Incompleteness. Being able to see every unit in this existence, its role, its participation, being able to understand every unit in this existence. So that's why we start with ourselves. We started with exercise one, observing the self by the self. Now we are going to go on to exercise two, observing the body by the self. So this need for physical facility by the body. We can see that the body doesn't need feelings to make it happy. It needs food, it needs clothes, it needs shelter to be, you know, nurturing it, protecting it. And we can see that all of these needs, they are temporary, they are not continuous. So you eat food, it gives energy to the body. But you can't keep eating food. It cannot be continuous. At some point, you, you know, the stomach is full. You get the sensation that the stomach is full. You're not, you know, able to get that good taste also anymore. So you want to stop. If somebody forces you to have more, you just, you want to, you know, discontinue. You want to run away from there. You don't want to have any more. You will refuse. You can see you cannot continue this. And whatever is required by the body, you know, how much food is required, we make a plan for the whole month, no? expenses when we are making expense plan. How much do we need to spend on groceries? So we can plan out every member of the house eats approximately some amount of grain, some amount of fruit, some amount of vegetables. So accordingly, we buy and we consume, isn't it? So you can see that the amount of food that is required by the body is also required in limited quantity. So we can see that whatever is required by the body has to do with physiochemical things. There are no feelings involved here, unlike the self. Also, if you look at the activities, activities in the body are also temporary. Sometimes you think, no, no, breath is there, heartbeat is there. Yes, it is there. But if you look closely, these are also, there is a break. It's not a continuous thing. If you look at the heartbeat, If you listen with a stethoscope, you will find two sounds. Lup, dup, lup, dup, lup, dup, like that. One sound has to do with when the heart is, you know, the muscle is contracting and it is pumping blood out. The other part has to do with the other sound has to do with the relaxation of the muscle when the blood is filling up inside the heart. So here also you will find there is a break. The muscle contracts, contracts, contracts up to a point. Then it stops contracting. Then after that the relaxation starts. And then relaxes, relaxes, relaxes up to a point stops relaxing, then the contraction starts again. So there is a break. Similarly with breath also you can see. So you'll find that all these activities are temporary. And we mentioned the response, recognition and fulfillment that is 
um, definite that is uh, you know there's no choice in the body about this so even if you give it poison you may choose to give it poison the body will take it the body cannot refuse it will eat it and then because the poison is going to do harm to the body it will do harm to the body there is no changing that <laughs> body doesn't have choice to change these things so it just goes along so all of this now we can directly observe are there any questions regarding this we did this observation also yesterday as an assignment so if we have any questions regarding this or any observations to share we can do that now if not we'll go further okay so now if you see there is the self a unit of consciousness there is the body which is a material unit and they are coexisting this we have the information now if we look at the interaction between the self and the body how is that interaction so supposing i feel like eating a sweet hmm? i instruct the body to get up to walk to the sweet shop to go there and to take out the money give the money to the shopkeeper and ask for the sweet so the body does it i take the sweet i instruct the body to put it in the mouth so the body puts it in the mouth so there is some sensation sensation of taste when i instruct the body to put the sweet in the mouth i read that sensation i feel the good taste i like that sensation so i instruct the body to ask for one more sweet again take out the money pay the shopkeeper tell him for one more sweet so the body does that again same process so as long as the the sweet is in the mouth i can taste the sensation that sweet sensation once the sweet has gone down the throat now it is with the body i didn't get the sweet in myself i could only taste the sensation the sweet sensation so you can see that this is something that is physiochemical it's not i mean it is something that is not physiochemical it is something that is what i am getting is some information but what is happening in the body is the physiochemical part so as long as the you know sweet is in the mouth some saliva is generated in the body some chemicals are released so those physiochemical changes are taking place in the body but what am i getting out of it i am only reading that sensation of sweet taste so this part what i am reading this is just information so i am not getting anything physical out of this exchange of information i am only getting the information part 
the physiochemical stuff that is happening is in the body. Similarly, when I instruct the body to do something, I give some instruction. That instruction goes to the brain in the body. From the brain, it is relayed to the relevant places in the body. Like for instance, when I instruct the body to get up and walk, I have sent that information to the brain. Now the brain sends this, you know, relays this information in the form of some physiochemical changes to particular nerves, particular muscles and so on. And the body moves in that direction. So in the body, there are physiochemical changes, but this exchange of information between the self and the body, this is all just information. There is nothing physiochemical that I am getting out of it. So if there are questions here, we'll take them up. Namaskar, madam. Namaskar to all. Madam, uh, related to uh, the present discussion, uh, previously also I asked her due to lack of time, uh, it was stopped actually. Uh, now, uh, kindly I am uh, uh, reminding. Mm -hmm. Madam, suppose if we take uh, sweet what we like, mm -hmm. uh, even though the happiness uh, what we are getting is uh, temporary and long lasting, but we are getting happiness now, madam. The, what is that feeling? Is it not happiness or uh, excitement, you say? But what is the qualitative difference between uh, these two? Yeah. So if you recall what we mentioned is happiness, we defined it very clearly. Ah, at the beginning. Yeah. That when we are in harmony within, we are calm, we are comfortable, we are in harmony harmony and we want the continuity of this all the uh, time no no what no no uh, we we want the continuity definitely continuity we want the uh, that happiness huh. now if you look at the sweet hmm? mm, madam you get some pleasure out of it when you eat it no definitely you like the sensation of the taste isn't it <laughs> definitely madam but if you keep eating at some point you realize or at least you know as you keep eating more and more of the sweet this we can all try out and see no, yes, as we keep eating more and more of the sweet it looks like now the sweet sensation is not so nice yes madam no i don't want it anymore really at some point i don't want to continue it mm -hmm. so when we said happiness we wanted to it to continue without a break. No, I want to stay with that all the time. But here, neither can you actually stay with it all the time, nor do you want to stay with it all the time. At some point, it becomes difficult to bear even. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, madam. Somebody forces me to eat when I am full. What do I do? I refuse. I don't want to. I can't see the sweet taste also anymore. Uh, really, uh, I I don't appreciate it. So you can see. No, ah, I can see, madam. But my doubt is, hmm. what is the difference in that uh, feeling at the first? Suppose if I take uh, the first time, I feel uh, happy, na? Uh, what is that state? Uh, yeah, you can call it temporary happiness. You can. Yeah, call yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. That actually temporary happiness we call. Hmm. Uh, Whatever we want to continue, that is the permanent happiness. Huh. And if you see, uh. if you eat a lot of things that are you know, actually causing harm to the body. At some point, it is going to lead to unhappiness, in fact. Uh, that is okay, madam. My doubt is, suppose if we want, uh, if, we, if we are in line with natural acceptance, mm -hmm. where we continue, where we want to continue, that, mm -hmm. that there we feel happy. Here also at the beginning we feel happy. It is temporary. That is permanent. 
so quantitatively there is difference but qualitatively uh, how can but i quantitatively the there is difference quantitatively means uh, uh, i mean it is a feeling no ah uh, feeling how do you quantify the feeling more happy less happy how do you say uh, uh, that that feeling what is the difference madam uh, what i'm saying feelings you can't quantify no it is something qualitative uh, when yeah. you experience it you can see that no no quantitative why i used the term because this is temporary so quantitative difference only we are telling because uh, see quantity is like when i can measure the quantity but i can't measure this no uh, and means it is long, not long lasting na no? means uh, temporarily it is uh, uh, there in that sense i am use, uh, using the term that's why you know it's a feeling if this is what we were saying something that is more subtle you try to explain through the gross no so yeah it's not possible short. may not be possible it will fall short oh, so yes madam we are trying to say something describe something about something that is more subtle than the words can actually no oh, yeah yeah you no know, try to really really madam for so a very long time madam it, when you experience it yourself ha ah, you experience also the difference very clearly isn't it ha ah, experience also suppose mm -hmm. when i because both the experiences i have not fully to some extent mm -hmm. whenever uh, my personal experience i am telling madam whenever i am getting away from the sense pleasures i am completely free that also i experienced what do you mean by completely free completely free uh, yeah yeah you uh, you again uh, want uh, uh, means what uh, uh, that continuity continuity what do you mean by that suppose if i am if i want sweet madam if i have it i feel happiness i means i feel some pleasure suppose if i don't want it at all then also my mind is completely relieved from that then i can be continuously happy in that uh, uh, state exactly see exactly. before before you ate that sweet for the first time ah oh, madam you didn't have any kind of uh, craving or longing for it no 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 but when you tasted it and you liked it mm, we know that sweet why you are craving for it uh, no, yeah. even the fact that it is not there supposing you brought only two rasgullas home ha uh, madam you ate one you liked it the sweet taste and you ate the other one mm -hmm. and now you liked the sweet taste now you are craving for one more mm -hmm. but now there is no more at home now that itself becomes the cause of your unhappiness many a yeah, time yeah yeah naturally madam naturally okay. yeah yeah and then later if you ate too many and then it caused some problem in the body that is another cause of unhappiness no oh, definitely definitely madam and so like that it goes but so you will see that your feeling is going up and down up and down up and down yeah yeah but that uh, i have understood madam when you are you know talking of um the harmony within you the yeah yeah madam mm -hmm. that is a different kind of a feeling that you have mm -hmm. it? so yes. one way to describe it is that you want it to continue uh -huh. for oh. the time you don't yeah, yeah. want to come out of it yeah yeah madam yeah yeah that yes for a very long time i have madam this doubt uh, so uh, that's why again i am asking you i'm sorry <laughs> yeah okay thank you thank you madam namaskar namaste yeah good morning madam good morning yeah uh, uh, as i understand from the, um, the uh, um, discussion what you were telling the brain is part a part of the body right mhm mm if the brain is not there then how is the self going to instruct the brain and how is the self going to achieve what we call as happiness <laughs> that's why it is already there now what if it is not there that is a very hypothetical question we will not get into that because see the the reality that is already there we have to try to understand it if we are trying to get into what if that was not there and how it would happen well this is how it is 
the when the when the brain is there only then the self associates with the body otherwise so the, so, so does it mean that the self is instructing the brain or the brain is causing the action in the self self is instructing the brain self is associating with the body when the brain is developed you see now in the animal you can see that there is a self in the animal also yes because the brain has developed up to some point the self associates with the animal for other you know smaller creatures and all that may not have a brain self doesn't think of associating there because it can't do anything much with it so the self chooses to associate with the uh either the animal body or the human body based on its state of development so in our case as a human being the self has associated with the human body because it is at a point of development where you know it can there is a potential and you there is a need to know so it has associated with the human body which has a brain where there is you know capacity to instruct the body and do all of that so we just have to understand these things okay 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 madam thank you okay namaste didi namaste sabhi ko uh, didi uh, that heart is beating of its own Uh, am I correct? Am I understood it correct? Means self is not involved. It's the very fact that the self has decided to associate with the body, that means self is involved, isn't it? Okay. We don't see the effect. Supposing okay. you are anxious. Yeah. You notice that the heart beat. Yeah. Ah yes yes yes. So And my feelings. can impact heart beat also so self is definitely involved isn't it okay and uh, uh, regarding sleep did uh, is the self is instructing the body to sleep or uh, the body itself has a property uh, or self organized thing which makes the body sleep we follow your question uh whenever we are sleeping so it is the instruction of the self to the body to go and sleep or uh, is the body is uh, sleeping automatically because of its uh, organization my its uh, property you see many things are involved but if you see mostly yeah it has to do with your own instruction see you instruct the body go to sleep okay the body has to lie down no ha 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 but you keep involving the brain in thinking and you may be having lot of conflicting thoughts in you okay that is happening where that's happening in the self but we'll come to this when we do the exercise in more detail Mm-hmm. but you notice that when you are busy thinking you are not able to sleep ha huh, right. right body may be tired ha uh-huh. body lay down on the bed but you can't sleep when you are busy thinking something or if you are very excited about something also you don't sleep yes hmm? yes so the actually you are not able to totally instruct the body to sleep because you are you are the one who are interfering with it mm-hmm. but when you are calm when you are comfortable mm-hmm. the body you know has limitation it it can only do so much then it has to take rest mm-hmm. so you allow it to rest it rests and you sleep okay is it but we'll come to this when we do the exercise in more detail yes. we'll be able to see some of this okay oh. thank you devi thank you
so in step 1 of exercise 2 of observing the self and the body by the self you can see that i am there i means the self i am there how do i know that i am there i can see all these activities going on within me no my imagination the feelings the thoughts the expectations all this is going on within me so i know that i am there so you can say the self is a reality it exists i exist so it is an existential reality the body is also there how do i know that the body is there hmm? how do you know that the body is there can you reply in the chat how do you know that the body is there hmm please reply in the chat sindhakala ji is saying sensation so sensation we can see sangeeta shukla ji said we can see yes we can see we can see through the eyes what is that seeing through the eyes that is also a sensation isn't it can you can you see that the body is there when you close your eyes yes we can still see isn't it that the body is there we can see that the body is there now with the gross eyes we are not seeing but we still know that the body is there how do we know that it is there because we can we are reading some sensation so earlier it was the eyes i am reading the sensation you know of because after all in the eyes what is happening the image is forming an upside down image is forming in the retina but i am the one who is making sense of that no i am the one who is identifying that okay this is this we discussed this briefly earlier also we can do that in a little more depth here so as we see the various you know if we look at the sensation even with the eyes closed for instance you may be sitting on a chair with your feet on the ground now the sensation of the ground against your feet you can feel that you can read that sensation so similarly any part of the body where there is little pain or discomfort you are quickly able to read that even though your eyes are closed so you know that the body is there so that's how we say that on the basis of reading sensation from the body we can observe that the body is there so the body is also a reality it exists it is an existential reality so we can say that the self and the body are two distinct realities and we can observe this so can we do this exercise for 10 minutes we'll try to observe directly that the body is there hmm? i am there i think we have already done in the last exercise and we can see that even now that the imagination is going on we can also try to pay attention to the body now and see you can try with eyes open eyes closed try to read the sensation from the body we'll do that for 10 minutes then we'll come back to your observations and mute myself
Yes, so we have been observing for about 10 minutes and we can share our observations. The pleasure received from some food items is not only temporary, it's also indefinite. We like it only when we are already in harmony inside. Very true, Rupalimji. In a sad or angry state, I don't enjoy my most favorite food. The same favorite food doesn't seem tasty anymore in the tongue if someone says something and I am negatively affected. From many examples, I have observed that the feeling in relationships takes precedence over the taste from sensation. So this is an example of how you can relate to it when you directly observe it within yourself. So you can see this about what she has mentioned, the indefiniteness in that also. Because the self is busy with something else, it's not reading that sensation in the first place. Because something else more important is disturbing <laughs> the harmony in the self. So the happiness is not there. Okay, so um, if anybody has any questions or observations to make about what we just looked at, trying to see these two distinct realities, trying to see if I can notice the body even with eyes closed or open. Thank you, madam. Uh, when I close my eyes, then if I get any information from the uh, senses, then only I observe that there is body. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, uh, yes, madam. But uh, suppose if I want to know that uh, whether the body is there or not, then imagination only. By imagination only, I am observing. But not what through information. Mean? Suppose my body is there. How can I know any uh, information through eyes or through? That you are reading, that only is uh, information, no? That is there. But uh, even though information is not there, I can what imagine, uh, madam. It's not there. Suppose, no, no information is coming from eyes. No information is coming from uh, ears. Uh, no information is coming from uh, the skin. Uh, but it the... is, no? Uh, it is there. Uh, there is some rumbling noise in your stomach oh yeah it's yeah something that you can appreciate no no uh -huh. madam madam yeah, your yeah. Eyes closed without uh, hearing something from outside still you are able to appreciate that sensation in fact yeah, if yeah. you notice this if you try to see uh -huh. sensations are there in the body all the time something or the other is going on uh -huh. whenever but i am with the um... or not, that is a big question when we observe it now or not. Ah, whether you read it or not, ah, that when, is a big question. So yes, not that the sensation is not there. Ah, it is there. Yeah. When I'm with the it when I'm flowing there. with ah, ah, when, when I'm flowing, flowing with sensation, you don't read that sensation. Ah, ah, yes, madam. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that I observe. And that is very true. When ah, we are yeah. with our imagination we don't even notice that the body is there yes so many times it happens no yeah yeah many times we are with our own thoughts even for hours together and we may not notice the body at all ah yes madam so very true yes. thank you madam thank you so when i was observing myself the entire uh, this concentration i can say was you know, in reading the sensations that are coming or the things that are going inside the body. Since mm -hmm. it's the morning time, so I could sense something going in my stomach and mm. the birds outside. So the entire thing was about feeling the body from different, different senses. Though my eyes were closed, I kept my eyes closed, but I could see some random things also. Because there are many bulbuls outside, so I can see a bulbul. Even when I, you know, I have closed my eyes, I am able to see. Okay, now this is the bulbul that is calling outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, so you're hearing through the yeah, yeah, I am hearing. Yes, I am hearing. And thoughts are also going on, Didi. Mm-hmm. So there are some not not many, but yeah, few thoughts, very few thoughts that okay, this 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 I have to do today. Like but this. even this, that you know, this is a bulbul. All these are thoughts. Yes, yes. So I hear a bird and I am having this thought, okay, this is a bulbul. And I, even with closed eyes, I could just imagine a bulbul also. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We form the picture in ourselves, no? The image. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so this is what I just observed. Nice. And one thing that I would like to mention here, Didi, is when, we, when I started observing, the, there were you know, many thoughts, many. Now th- the thoughts have reduced. There are still random thoughts, but it has reduced. Like there are thoughts, but try not observe, many. Keep it open. Keep it open. Okay. Try to observe whether thoughts have reduced or conflicting thoughts have reduced. Yeah. Yes. You yes, may yes, notice yes, that the discomfort yes. is less. So we think th- no thoughts are there. But these are more subtle thoughts than the ones that were causing the contradiction. So we may not notice them. So keep it open right now. Yes, yes, GDP. The thoughts have reduced or the conflicting thoughts have reduced, but okay. the other thoughts are still there. Okay, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Didi. Thank you. Thank you. In the next slide, we can see this is our assignment. This is what we are going to do all day today. Try to directly see, you know, yourself in the form of your imagination and also Observe the body. Directly see that the body is also there and how you are coming to that conclusion. That both these realities are there. This we will try to focus on today, all day, and then we'll share our observations tomorrow. Uh, with that, I think we'll I'll put this on the group also. <laughs>